Here I have uh, enlisted some uh, important principles or guidelines with respect to retrosynthetic analysis. Now, whenever we perform retrosynthetic analysis of uh, any particular molecule, we should keep this principle in our mind so that uh, we could get to the sorting material in an appropriate scientific way. The first principle concerns uh, with the disconnection that the disconnection should be made to a known and reliable material. Only uh, a known and reliable material should be obtained in a retrosynthetic analysis uh, which uh, are available on commercial scale. If we obtain something uh, unfavorable th which uh, are not uh, available on commercial scale or they cannot be made uh, through simple organic reaction, then we should avoid such retrosynthetic analysis. The second principle says that whenever uh, we find a uh, hetero atom in a molecule, uh, therefore we should make a disconnection next to the hetero atom. The third uh, guideline addresses the problem of chemoselectivity for concern with uh, uh, a two group disconnection. Uh, which is better than a one group disconnection and the fifth principle concerned with functional group interconversion uh, whenever we encounter a difficult example therefore we could go for a functional group interconversion so that make a molecule uh, easy for a disconnection so let's uh, consider some example we will apply this principle Here we have a molecule in which we have a hetero atom such as uh, oxygen. Therefore, uh, we need to apply principle number second by disconnecting the molecule right over here. We get two symptoms. Oxygen as it is electronegative, therefore it is more suitable to place a negative charge on it and this in tone is equivalent to phenol which is easy to predict and uh, another thin tone has a positive charge this is carbon number one and two this is donor or d1 thin tone and this is a2 thin tone which uh, corresponds to reagent like this that is one two Diabromo E10. So here we uh, check out the application of principle number second. Besides the reagent for the starting material are the target molecule are phenol and 1,2 diabromo. want to die bromoethane this is phenol so both uh, reagent are uh, readily available on commercial scale and therefore this uh, retrosynthetic uh, analysis is feasible unlike uh, let's consider the another uh, disconnection let me break the molecule right over here other charge on this thin tone and negative charge on the next fragment now if we consider both in tone uh, and uh, go for their equivalent structure let's suppose for example here we put a chlorine atom and a bromine atom these are their equivalent uh, structure but uh, this pathway is a bit uh, more difficult uh, because there are multiple functional groups in the starting material and it creates a sort of problem. Just take an example of chlorobenzene. First of all, you will have to make it a uh, greener reagent uh, for making it a good uh, a nucleophile, uh, especially greener reagent uh, is uh, difficult to obtain uh, through organometallic uh, reactions. Uh, and as far as the second uh, component is concerned, uh, it is uh, 
difficult to synthesize so this root is uh, not uh, feasible just take uh, another root as well let me bring the molecule right over here i am showing it with the green sign the positive charge on this simple and negative charge on bromine so hopefully we can say that this structure is uh, equivalent to here we will place uh, some electronegative elements such as chlorine are again we return back to the sorting material so definitely we will put uh, here some thing other that uh, make the carbon uh, uh, positive so we'll place uh, an electronegative group such as nitro and uh, this structure is equivalent for HBr so again uh, if we consider both the reagents they create a lot of problem or trouble for example if you use uh, an HBr which is uh, a strong acid de definitely it will protonate the oxygen atom once uh, we try to react uh, it with the material and we will get uh, a product once uh, this is protonated so definitely uh, we can expect uh, an FN2 type reaction right over here so this uh, route is not feasible for getting the target material because uh, either we violate the principle in this case because we are not disconnecting as uh, I have shown with the uh, uh, green therefore this uh, disconnection is against the principle of number two and we are also not uh, getting the desired sorting material HBR is available but the aromatic fragment is not uh, available and therefore it violates the principle of number first because we need to go or uh, reach to a sorting material that are readily available so we must keep all these uh, important uh, point in mind before doing any uh, retro synthetic analysis let's uh, consider uh, another example we have an important insecticide as we have uh, a hetero atom in the molecule therefore we need to apply principle number two we need to disconnect it next to the hetero atom and we will get this is a molecule of chloro chlorobenzide which is a sort of insecticide therefore we will get to syncone fragment as sulfur is more nucleophilic therefore we put a negative charge which is equivalent to it is easy to predict and as far as the second syncone is concerned here we have power charge therefore in this syncone it is more feasible to play some electronegative species such as bromine or chlorine so 
both species are uh, available for example if uh, let me call it a and if is b so when both uh, a plus b are reacted in the presence of sodium methoxide which act as a base it will uh, deprotonate the sulfthiol uh, and it will make a sulfide and this sulfide will perform an SN2 reaction at this carbon atom and we will get the target material this is the target material and we will get it in the presence of sodium methoxide in ethanol and this is a forward synthesis it is forward Now let's uh, move to the another principle of uh, chemoselectivity. Consider an example. we have two choice of uh, disconnection consider this disconnection let me call it a I will get two fragment and uh, this disconnection call me B and we get two fragment now the question is that which disconnection is uh, appropriate now whether I should go for disconnection B or disconnection A is a question of uh, chemoselectivity. For example, for this case, uh, I would have this reagent equivalent to In other words, I will have to make uh, uh, a phenoxide that will perform an SN2 reaction right over here. In other words, we can say that an alkylation of a phenol is taking place. In this case, and as far as uh, here, uh, we also have a phenoxide uh, where uh, alkylation takes place, but the two reagents are different. If uh, I consider phenone number A, let me call it phenone A, and this phenone as B. So if uh, I compare the reactivity of both phenone, then the benzylic uh, chlorides are less reactive as compared to uh, the bromoethyl group. So we can say that this phenone more reactive than B. This is a special reagent which is obtained from this phenone B. Uh, in other words, we can say that uh, the bromoethyl group is more reactive than the benzyl or bromobenzyl group. Therefore, uh, 
we reach to another important principle of uh, uh, chemoselectivity. In order to avoid the problem of uh, chemoselectivity, we should disconnect the more reactive group first. By applying this principle, therefore, I will choose the root number B, which is good, uh, unlike the root number A. Therefore, this uh, disconnection is feasible, unlike this disconnection. So, this is an important principle of uh, chemoselectivity. Whenever we uh, try to plan a synthesis, therefore, uh, we will uh, make disconnection of the reactive group first uh, the symptom a is uh, equivalent to one to diabromo ethane if we look at the forward synthesis Again, this uh, before going to a forward synthesis, we can also uh, break this fragment to simplify it. Let me break it right over here, and I will get OH paradoxyphenol, and again PH. So this route is uh, feasible. Let's uh, consider the forward synthesis. Parahydroxyphenol in the presence of a base when it is uh, reacted with species number one. we will get material number two right over here which is again subjected to a basic condition and now we try to react it with number three one two diabromo it then we will get The target material here. This is the target material. Consider one another example of uh, chemoselectivity, in which we will consider uh, the formation of an amine. Let's consider an example. If we disconnect it right over here into two simple fragment. So these uh, two fragments are not possible for getting the target material uh, because uh, primary amine are prone to multiple alkylation and we will get uh, to a quantum ammonium salt with the primary amine. In order to avoid this problem, which is the problem of chemoselectivity, we can make a functional group interconversion right over here. Let me subject this molecule to functional group interconversion by getting an amide functionality. Know it is possible to uh, disconnect right over here, and I will get NH2 and an acid chloride. So this route is uh, feasible especially, which is a route for a reductive amination. Let, uh, if I consider the synthesis, one and two, I will react one and two It will give 
product number three which is uh, reduce catalytic hydrogenation I will get the target material by this way I can avoid the problem of multiple alkylation so this is an important uh, example of chemoselectivity how it can be avoided one another uh, example of amine chemistry is with reference to alkylation of I mean in order to avoid the alkylation of amine is oxime example for example the same throat material can be subjected to another root Now we can write an amine root right over here. This is uh, an amine which can be broken down to a primary amine and aldehyde. So the problem of or alkylation can be minimized by amine root as well. Thank you for watching the video.